Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Sid Chaudhary here from Yoga Byte, and pleased to be talking to you regarding the topic uh, of my talk, Taming Cross-Region Latency in Geo-Distributed SQL Databases. So let's dive right in. The world of databases can be divided into two parts. First are the OLAP databases, which are meant for analytical processing. And the second is the transactional processing or OLTP databases. There are some very important differences between those two. Let's look at them uh, one by one. OLAP databases are about write once and read frequently. They do not have too many concurrent sessions. As a result, they provide weaker ACID guarantees. They do support long running and more ad hoc interactive style queries. Basically, the queries are not known beforehand. They involve scanning through large amounts of data, large table scans. And the amount of data that is stored behind these databases is typically in petabyte scale. On the contrary, OLTP databases are significantly different. Um, we read and write frequently uh, from the OLTP databases because they are the source of truth databases for serving our applications. These applications uh, create many concurrent sessions and they expect a certain amount of uh, strictness around the data that is served back. As a result, the, the databases have to provide stricter asset guarantees, especially in the isolation level um, that is supported. Typically, it has to be serializable isolation so the and the queries that are served tip have to be served at in a very low latency manner so blazing fast queries but the way we do so is the query patterns are very very much well known the queries themselves are also very much well known and they are uh, coded into the application logic these queries uh, usually, usually involve point reads and short range scans. And the data that is stored by these databases is typically in terabyte scale, can be in hundreds of terabytes as well. So for uh, today's talk, we are gonna focus on the OLTP category and we'll dive deeper into that. That brings to the uh, topic um, of uh, today's talk, which is about distributed SQL. What is distributed SQL? In short, it is a revolutionary OLTP database architecture where we keep the SQL semantics of relational data modeling and strict asset transactions intact, but add three additional capabilities that are typically absent in traditional relational databases. First is ultra resilience, the ability to uh, natively failover and repair when infrastructure underneath the database nodes fails is known as ultra resilience. Secondly, it's about massive scalability, the ability to serve an increasing amount of throughput for the applications by simply adding new nodes, which is also known as horizontal write scalability, is, is what uh, we refer to when we say massive scalability. Last but not the least, it's about ability to geographically distribute the data across multiple regions or multiple data centers so that our applications can be served uh, with low latency uh, queries. Now, why is this distributed SQL architecture so important? The reason is twofold. It comes first from the needs of today's applications, which are increasingly becoming microservices based applications. These applications are going through a fast, a, a really high amount of iteration and changes. And in that process, they, they need the ability to change uh, the queries without changing the schema and which is the hallmark of relational data modeling. They need strict guarantees around consistency and correctness, as well as for a select few microservices that are uh, serving large amount of uh, data, they need massive scalability. 
On the other hand, we are living in the multi-cloud era today where uh, we have a lot of different cloud providers and all their data centers and regions at our, at our fingertips. In this multi-cloud infrastructure world, we cannot rely on the uh, previous world of specialized uh, infrastructure, but we have to rely on commodity infrastructure, which is more failure prone than ever before. Hence the need for ultra resilience. And since we have now access to hundreds of data centers and regions at our finger trips, we better start exploiting them by making our SQL databases geo-distributed. So the end result is developers are able to build applications faster. Operations engineers are able to scale, manage both day one and day two operations easily on the cloud infrastructure or Kubernetes infrastructure of their choice. And the end result is businesses are able to launch new services, new initiatives faster than ever before. Now that we have looked at the basics of distributed SQL, let's dive into the distributed SQL architecture. In, at the core of the architecture is, is a cluster of nodes. And typically it requires a minimum of three nodes because these databases use what is known as distributed consensus like Raft or Paxos. And they need an odd number of uh, replicas to be stored inside the database to avoid split brain kind of scenarios. Alongside replication, these databases also automatically shard, which is partition data across multiple nodes. And each such shard has one shard leader marked in orange and two shard followers or follower replicas in two different fault domains than where the shard leader resides. And that was is marked by the shard follower one and shard follower two in white. As we keep adding new nodes or we keep removing nodes from this minimum three node cluster, data will continuously get rebalanced so that we are able to exploit the, the capacity that we're bringing forth uh, into this cluster. The end result of all this hard work is that microservices applications can now benefit this entire cluster of nodes as a single logical relational database that speaks the well-known SQL language. With that, I will introduce you to Yugabyte DB, which is a distributed SQL database with its own unique characteristics. First and foremost, it speaks the Postgres SQL language, so it's fully compatible with the Postgres SQL drivers and its ecosystem. Secondly, it's about giving high performance, both in terms of low latency as well as high throughput as you deliver as you add more nodes into the cluster and and it is built for the cloud native and kubernetes ecosystem where infrastructure is highly dynamic and highly failure prone and as a database it has all the built-in guarantees uh, including asset compliance to ensure that even in such a dynamic environment you do not ever lose data Last but not the least, it is a 100% open source database distributed under the permissive Apache 2.0 license. We are excited that distributed SQL is actually the future of the relational database architecture, which is so uh, you know, critical uh, to the modern generation applications that, that we all uh, touch and feel daily in our lives. Previously, we would have relied uh, on um, traditional RDBMSs like MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server. However, now the world is moving towards the likes of Amazon Aurora, Google Spanner, and obviously, Yugabyte DB. So today's focus for the remaining part of the stock is in this category, this newer, exciting category of relational databases called distributed SQL. 
Now come, let's come to the second aspect of the talk, which is about geo distribution, which is essentially running a cluster of database uh, nodes across multiple regions or multiple data centers that are geographically far away from each other. Now, typically in a traditional RDBMS, what we have done over the years is uh, have deployed them in essentially two uh, configurations. First is the active passive configuration primarily used for disaster recovery, where even though my applications layer is running uh, in multiple regions because they are stateless, they, they don't have any state, internal state to manage, they rely on the database to manage their state. Uh, we, we have these multiple uh, applications running in multiple regions, but they all talk to this one node, single node uh, monolithic RDBMS uh, in, in a single uh, region, in one of the regions where the applications is running. So as a result, the applications that are running in the same region will have a, a lower latency experience, but the applications that are farther away in a different region will have a uh, higher latency experience. That's just laws of physics involved in bytes being transferred over the internet. In order to make this uh, setup, uh, you know, amenable uh, to recovery from disasters, we add a passive rec replica in a different region, and we use uh, what is known as asynchronous replication, which is essentially taking the write-ahead log of the uh, you know, master database instance and replicating after the data has been committed over to the passive replica in a separate separate region. Now, the pa passive replica has no knowledge that there is this stream is actually coming from a different database instance. It is just another writer to the database. While this sort of gets the job done, the there is a penalty or there is a compromise to be made here. Uh, we have to manually promote this passive replica if we have a total outage on our region and we lose the instance. And during this failover, we will have some temporary data loss for data that has not yet had a chance to replicate over to the passive replica. This is how we have had, uh, have been using relational databases forever. So this wouldn't be new to anybody. Second architecture, which is also getting common, is what is known as active, active, or multi master architecture, where we create two full copies of the database. Essentially, active master one and active master two are essentially having the same data, they're copies of each other. And there are, uh, you know, passive replicas that are present to tolerate the loss of that uh, master in that particular region. And then we add bidirectional asynch asynchronous replication. And the end result is that if we update the same record on both sides, then the last writer who, uh, wins in, in this, this semantics. And the result is that one of those two writes will actually be lost forever. So uh, applications have to take a lot of care to not uh, write to the same records from both sides in such a uh, active, active multi-master deployment of a uh, traditional RDBMS. Again, these things are very well understood. We have learned to live with it. But distributed SQL is exciting because it goes to the heart of change uh, to these problems and starts changing them. So first is the entire architecture is about no data loss. And, and it supports multiple topologies depending on the kind of failures we would like to tolerate. Let's start with the simplest, where there is a single data center, a single region, and there are multiple racks or multiple availability zones, and a single cluster is stretched across three such availability zones. As writes are coming into any of those nodes, they are consistent across these zones. Uh, you will be immediately able to write to one zone and read from the other zone the same data. There is obviously no cross-region latency here because we are in the single region, but there is no region level failover and repair as well. So if we lose this entire region, then we are 
uh, we are in a uh, troubled spot and we'll have to recover using uh, a, a full cluster backup, right? Which usually involves some amount of manual processing. Taking this one step further, uh, we can run uh, distributed SQL in a single cloud, but in a multiple region and uh, setup where let's say we, we go to Amazon or Google Cloud or Azure and we pick three regions from, from their arsenal and we run a single cluster stretch across all three of them. The beauty here is that it is not only consistent across the regions, uh, it actually can tolerate uh, region level failures automatically. So if we, let's say, lose uh, region two um, in, in, in the middle of, of the uh, image here, um, it, there, the, uh, the cluster will automatically heal with the replicas that are present in region one and region three, and it will continue to take writes as if nothing has happened. And that's the power of the distributed SQL architecture, right? We can extend again this same concept to a multi-cloud topology where we can run, um, you know, if, if the entire cluster across three clouds, not the three regions, one region of Amazon, one region of Google, and one region of Azure or on-premises. In this case, we're trying to create an additional layer of fault tolerance, which is uh, to say that the chances of a two clouds losing their regions at the same time is, is extremely low. So this is like uh, the most fault tolerant scenario you can think of. However, both uh, two and three uh, come with cross region latency as, as a sort of a penalty because in order to commit with distributed consensus, we need to ensure that we are waiting for one of, of the replicas, which is can be in a far, farther every region to also commit. And this cross-region latency goes to the heart of concerns uh, that developers have around deploying geo-distributed SQL architecture. So the rest of the talk, I'll focus on how to mitigate these, uh, these cross-region latency problems by taming, and hence the note of taming cross-region latency. So, uh, what we'll look at is nine different techniques to reduce inter-region communication. And it's categorized into two uh, blocks. One is the basic building blocks, which has a few uh, constructs that you can, uh, as, as, as application developers, you can use. And usually these constructs, and these constructs are uh, transparent to the application. Your application uh, data modeling, uh, does not need to change in order to account for. And that's the beauty of these. There are some advanced configurations which we'll look at where you can draw out more mileage, which means you can reduce even more cross-region uh, communication. But in those cases, you have to build your data model a little bit differently, a little bit more smartly in order to exploit the power of distributed SQL. So let's drive right into each one of them. First is about strongly consistent, which is also known as correct reads uh, without using any quorum in the read path. So since the, uh, the, the shard leader is, has always the latest data that uh, my applications need, we can always rely on them to serve us the data uh, without necessarily being dependent on any other replicas on the read path. Note that we have already done the hard work of updating the replicas on the write path. So we want to get the benefit of that hard work on the read path by just simply asking the shard leaders uh, to give us the strongly consistent information. Now, in order for this to work, uh, it is important that the distributed uh, SQL database uses uh, not only distributed consensus, but uses something known as a leader lease that ensures that for a given shard, there can be only one leader at any point of time. And, and that allows us to you know, remove uh, cross-region uh, communication and hence latency for a bunch of queries. Now, would you, if, if you ask me, what is a typical workload for this? A typical workload for this is a user's 
uh, password authentication in a SaaS application. Let's say I'm logging into Salesforce or Marketo or you know there are all this uh, Zendesk, and in there when I'm logging in, I have to authenticate the the applications to authenticate the password I'm entering with the password that has been stored in my profile, and that authentication is is very vital it has to be uh, served with the lowest latency possible because without that uh, if if that process takes higher latency then we risk user dissatisfaction that particular workload can be served with strongly consistent reads in distributed sql since they don't use quorum and the only latency you see is essentially whatever is the latency uh, between the client and the database node there is no cross region latency taking this step uh, again one step further we know that it, on 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 the this three node every node also has some follower replicas now the follower replicas follow uh, a a uh, notion called timeline consistency which means the data is always uh, present in them in a in an same order as the shard leader however they may be slightly stale so if if we're okay the workload is okay to to accept timeline consistent follower reads then we can tell the database to give us follower data without ever consulting the shard leader and the typical workload that that uh, serves for this purpose is product reviews in a retail application there may be 200 uh, reviews uh, at this point of time for a given product or a given item but the users who 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 are seeing these products on their mobile phones and, or their web apps they wouldn't realize if we had uh, 199 instead of 200 in the list of product reviews that we present to them so that's this is the place where slightly stale data is okay uh, and and we can serve that information through the follower replicas and this also has the added benefit of reducing the uh, pressure or the load on the shard leaders to serve all kinds of queries joins pow powered by follower reads is essentially uh, a combination of the step uh, of the technique one and the technique two that we talked about where instead of relying on just the shard leader and just the followers we take a sum total of that view uh, and go to any node and say uh, give me the list of tickets that are filed by a single user again this will not be 100% accurate but it will not it will have slightly stale timeline consistent information that is good enough for most purposes if we actually want to avoid cross region latencies um, in distributed SQL architectures. Okay, so we have, we have seen three of the techniques. Let's go over to the fourth technique. In the fourth technique, we tell the database cluster to pin all our shard leaders to a single region instead of distributing them uniformly across all the regions. Why would we do so? We would do so if we know ahead of time that a single region is dominant with respect to our read requests if we take the loyalty application of a east coast brand in the us like dunkin donuts then obviously most of the reads to that loyalty application emanate in the east coast so if we pin all the shard leaders to the us east region then we are guaranteed that we can even serve completely strongly consistent information across even fully relational uh, schemas by simply going to that one region where all the that one preferred region where all the shard leaders are stored again by using the dis the per shard distributed consensus architecture smartly and by giving uh, uh, hints to the cluster at uh, at either uh, query time or at cluster creation time without changing data modeling we can actually draw out a, a lot of mileage 
from the distributed SQL architecture uh, where cross-region latency is, is non-existent. Okay. Now we'll go to the advanced scenarios. One such advanced scenario is known as row level geopartitioning. Imagine that we are the uh, we're building the user profile of uh, Zoom web conferencing or WebEx web conferencing. Now, naturally, web conferencing is a global application. They have users in almost every country of the world. So how do we model such a um, user profile? We would create, a, okay, in today's world, without distributed SQL, it's a very complicated problem. You're looking at, you know, every data center having its own independent cluster, and there is some synchronization happening offline in order to keep the data um, uh, consistent. In distributed SQL, this gets solved at the core of the database, where you can design or create a single table to store this global customer data, but alongside each uh, customer or user information, you also store the country of residence. And then you uh, you tell the database that as incoming rows uh, are coming in, we look at that particular country of residence column in, in that row and pin it to the nearest uh, region where the cluster is located. The end result is that reads from a particular region will not have to travel outside that particular region. And we saw that the first technique, right? Strongly consistent reads do not require quorum. The same benefit applies now in the, con in the context of geo partitioning, where a single table is spread across multiple nodes of multiple regions but data is localized to that particular region for that node. Very, very interesting concept. Uh, along with row level geo partitioning, we can also think about how do we keep related tables or related rows of tables close to each other so that when queries come in with parent child and, and hierarchical relationships, we don't have to bring the network into the equation and we can just serve by looking inside whatever I have in my current node. There are multiple tricks, techniques associated with that. Co-located is where at a database level, all the tables share a single shard. Co-partitioned is where a bunch of tables share a shard key and are potentially located on, on the same set of nodes. Interleave tables, which is what Google Spanner uh, implements uh, and, and is shown on, on the uh, slide here, uses uh, the technique of storing all the child records inside the, the parent record in a hierarchical manner. So in this case, we see that uh, example here, like Mark Richards is the singer and he has two albums, Total Junk and Go, Go, Go. Now, for the album Go, 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 there are two songs, 42 and nothing is the same. This entire set of records is stored in an interleaved manner. That means in a single uh, storage construct on a single node so that uh, queries related to singers and their albums and their songs can be served more easily. A more complicated example here is around Catalina Smith, whereas uh, uh, they have an album named Green and there are songs, let's get back together, starting again, I knew where magic inside those, inside that green album. Again, the net result of all the three uh, techniques here, co-located, co-partition, interleaved, is related data is close together. As a result, cross-region latencies are avoided. Now, we saw at what things can happen, uh, can be done with respect to uh, you know, data placement or replica placement inside a single cluster. Uh, what we also look at from the perspective of the client, right? Um, if we are using standard SQL client driver, uh, like Postgres SQL, for example, then uh, those client drivers are not aware of uh, this this concept of multiple nodes powering a single database cluster. 
because those standards SQL client drivers uh, only were built for the monolithic uh, single node databases. So the common uh, approach here is to add a load balancer, which abstracts out the, the nodes that are present in the cluster and gives a single endpoint for the client applications to connect to. The, the issue here is that now we as application developers have to own the management of the load balancer as well as keeping the load balancer updated as and when we add or remove nodes. So it's not the best value proposition uh, as it stands. What if we had a topology aware SQL client driver where since it can um, actually understand the topology of the nodes as uh, they are added or removed, we don't need a load balancer at all. And it, even if we give it the address of a single node, it auto discovers all the nodes that are present in the cluster. Again, it makes our life so much more simple because we have taken out one uh, infrastructure element from the application to database path. As a result, we have reduced uh, our operational burden and also helped in lowering latency. There are other approaches as well to uh, to using uh, distributed SQL in a geo-distributed fashion. One such approach is read replicas, where uh, we have a single master cluster in one region spread across multiple availability zones. But in order to serve very remote, very far away reads, means reads from far away regions, we actually create a separate read replica in, in those regions and we make the clients of those regions connect to that read replica first so that if they are doing reads and they can accept timeline consistent, which is slightly stale reads, then read replicas suffice completely and there is no reason ever to come to the master cluster, which can be really far away. But if writes come in to the read replica, uh, then it automatically redirects that write back to the master cluster because that is where the writes are being taken. So this helps in reducing latency uh, if the workload allows for that kind of an approach. Again, uh, product reviews comes to, to my mind when it comes to um, powering geo distributed reads in far away regions may not work for for uh, other scenarios then the last deployment is actually a two cluster deployment it's not one cluster and in this case each cluster sort of works as a as a master cluster in its own right similar to the traditional rdbms paradigm we saw before uh, and each cluster is fault tolerant, consistent across zones, and each cluster has the full copy of the data that, that needs to be managed. But the, the, the work that additional work that needs to be done is each cluster uh, asynchronously replicates to the other cluster um, using last writer wins semantics for conflict resolution, which means we are back to the same problem of data loss on conflict. Um, but we do get the benefit that um, our rights are never uh, cross region and on failure, we can always make the um, applications talk to the, the master cluster that is still alive in a different region. OK, so I covered uh, nine techniques today in order to reduce uh, cross region latency in, in distributed SQL databases. As summary, I would like to point out that distributed SQL is an exciting architecture, which is increasingly becoming the future of relational databases. There are a few reasons behind it. It keeps the, uh, the power of SQL's relational data modeling and distributed asset transactions intact, because that's what we need to serve our source of truth uh, data. 
it keeps it, it brings in the the aspect of native resilience against failures at disk node zone region and cloud level which are all the more common in the multi cloud world we live in it adds the ability to do horizontal right scaling uh, with continuous data rebalancing automatically you don't have to write any complex replication logic on your own you don't have to manage those scripts and run them from time to time everything is baked into the core of the database it offers us multiple geo distributed deployment options to pick and choose depending on how much latency is acceptable to us compared to how much resilience we desire from our infrastructure and it does all this while ensuring that no data is lost as long as we stick to the 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 guarantees that that are provided and it gives us a single logical sql database which is a powerful notion from an app development standpoint where i don't even need to know whether my sql application is backed by a 3 node cluster or a 100 node cluster geo distributed is a a deployment paradigm which is very exciting previously it was not even possible in the sql world uh, other than you know very basic uh, active passive disaster recovery that and an active active multi master that i talked about uh, however the concern that geo distributed sql always implies cross region latency is not true there are multiple techniques that are that are available to us and every database implements it to these techniques uh, to some extent or the other and we use those techniques intelligently to reduce cross region communication as we saw there are two categories of such techniques the basic building blocks are heavily reliant on the core per shard distributed consensus architecture while the advanced and and they are completely transparent to the applications data modeling while the advanced configurations rely on more explicit data modeling changes such as row level geo partitioning and as well as uh, use of new smart topology aware client drivers with that i have reached the end of my presentation i uh, recommend uh, the audience to uh, to review the distributed sql blog uh, that all of us at yugabyte right where we talk about various concerns that that uh, we i touched upon today you can uh, welcome to join our community um, slack channel and you're well of welcome obviously to install yugabyte db on your own and see for yourself how distributed sql can can make a difference in your app development life cycle with that thank you Okay, hello everybody. This is Sid here. Um, now that the presentation is over, I'm open for a, a live Q and A. You can put in your uh, question in the in the Q and A with speaker window that you see in your on your screen if you have any questions. I am also available um, on the uh, OSS ELC uh, Slack community, um, and there is a dedicated channel for open source databases. Um, I'm hoping that open source and databases are exciting to you. Please come and uh, join us on that Slack channel. Would love to engage and and, and discuss uh, your your thoughts and and concerns. Okay, looks like we don't have questions. Tina, I think uh, we're done here.